What's up guys, V here. And in today's video, I wanna show you how to install the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Pro into your PC. Now, I'm gonna be installing this on an AMD AM5 motherboard, but the installation between Intel and AMD is very, very similar, so you can follow along. Now, chances are you might be installing this on a brand new build, which means you won't have to clean the thermal paste off. However, if you are just replacing an old cooler with this one, you're gonna have to go ahead and remove your old cooler and clean off the thermal paste. Now for me, I'm just gonna use 91% alcohol and some paper towels. And then while the paper towel is still dry, I'm just gonna swipe it across to get most of it. And then I'm just gonna wipe it one final time with the alcohol. Now, since the removal process on CPU coolers is so different, I won't go into detail about how to remove your old cooler. However, the only thing I can really recommend is to warm up your PC a little bit before the, you start the removal process. Usually while removing it, I like to give the old cooler a little wiggle while I pull straight out. If it's still not coming out, make sure all the screws and everything are fully loosened up so that way it comes out freely. Now we're ready to go ahead and take a look at the brackets and pick out exactly what we need. All right, so as mentioned, I'm gonna be installing this on an AMD motherboard. So I'm gonna need these two long brackets and the two screws that come in this little bag with the thermal paste. And then these two brackets here are the ones you would use for Intel motherboards. Intel motherboards also require you to use this backplate since Intel motherboards don't come with a backplate. AMD motherboards do come with their own backplate and specifically on AM5, it is already screwed down onto the motherboard so it does not fall off. For AM4 motherboards and some others, this backplate is not screwed on and will fall off but you can just hold it in place while you screw the cooler back in place for intel motherboards you would just put this in place and then you would just hold this back here while you install the cooler now for this cooler a lot of the assembly takes place outside of the case so we're just going to go ahead and assemble it right here on this desk and then we'll install the entire thing inside of the pc so first thing we need to do is get these little screws out along with the thermal paste and you can use your own thermal paste if you want. I'm going to use the one that it comes with. Now you're going to go ahead and attach your designated brackets to the to this cooling block. So if you have Intel, you're going to put these from the top of this cooling block right here and they fit in with these little slots. And then you would take that little screw that we took out of the bag and put it on the bottom. And you would put one on top and then the other one on bottom just like that. Now for AMD, same process. There's a little slot right here where it fits perfectly. And then you would take that little screw and it is helpful if you have a magnetic screwdriver to hold things in place. Now just screw it all the way down, flip this over and do the same thing on this side. Now that that's done, we're going to need to figure out where we're putting the fan. For the moment, I just want to do a quick test fit to see where it's going to fit. I want these logos and everything to face the correct way, so pay attention to that. One thing to remember about basic fans like these, the front is going to suck the air in, the back is going to blow it out. So that way, if we put it like this, that means the air will come from this side, go through all of these cooling fins and out the back. Now, if I were to put it on the back side, all the air will get pulled through these cooling fins and out the back. You can do it any way you want, but this is the recommended way. Another thing to keep in mind is where you want your cables to go. I like to hide mine the best that I can, so I'm gonna keep them facing down towards this cooling block right here, just like this. Now that we got all of the orientation and everything set up, you're gonna need two of these, and the way you install these is you put these little hooks right here through the front of the fan and that one it is installed now do the same on this one so just feed them through 
and give it a nice push and it's in there. Now we're not gonna go ahead and attach the fan just yet to it because we still need access to these screws while it's being screwed into the motherboard. But I will show you out here because it's gonna be easier to show you how to actually install the fan. So once it's inside of the case, obviously it's gonna be oriented like this. Imagine that it's inside of the case. All you're gonna do is take this section here, feed it through just like this at an angle so it grabs onto these fins. And then on the other side, you're just gonna put your thumb or your finger to force this down. There is a bit of flex here. And once you get enough pressure, it just falls right into the fins just like that. To remove the fan, you're just gonna do the opposite. So push down and then pull up just like this and then open it kind of like a door and just remove it. So we'll put the fan to the side and we'll go ahead and install this cooler into the PC. One thing we should not forget is to peel this off. Take this as your <laughs> reminder. There's a lot of instances where, you know, people leave them on and then they're wondering why their temps are so high. One quick note though, on AMD motherboards, these brackets do come pre-attached. So if you're building a brand new PC, you're gonna have to remove these. Put the screws and both brackets into a Ziploc bag and keep these around in case you ever need to use them for another cooler or something. For Intel motherboards, this is your time to put this in the back of your PC. If you can't have somebody else screwing this in for you, then what I recommend is to tape the back plate back there until you can get some of the screws in and get some tension on them. All right, now can't forget, we need to apply the thermal paste. All you really need is a pea-sized dot right in the center, about that much is fine. So line it up with the holes. Let's try to get one of them in place. There we go, now it's held in. Since I started here, I'm gonna go down in an X pattern to this bottom one here. Give it a few turns to uh, get it in place. Push down, give it a couple turns and just keep doing this until it is fully tightened down. That is fully seated all the way screwed in place. And now we're ready to install the fan. I'm gonna try to line up the top of this fan with the little bend right over here, just so it looks pleasing to the eyes. And now, just like I talked about before, get your thumb or your finger and press and it's in place. Now in my kit, I don't know if all the kits come with two extra brackets. These are so that if you were to buy another fan like this, or if you had another fan, you can always put these brackets in just like that and then put this on the backside. So that way you have a push pull configuration. I'm not going to do that in this PC, but it was really nice of them to include a spare set just in case. That could give you a little extra cooling, but in my experience, it doesn't do enough to uh, justify like a whole purchase of a fan. Like I said, if you already have another fan and you don't mind having it back here, go for it. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the cable plugins. So since this cooler only has two cables, it's gonna be very straightforward, very simple. The first one is going to be for your fan to spin. So right there is where we're gonna plug this in. And you just need to line it up with that little notch right there. So there you can see it fully plugged in. And now the next step is to plug in the RGB. Now, if you didn't get the RGB model, you won't have this cable, so you don't have to worry about it. You can skip this part. This one has a five volt, three pin, a RGB connector. If your motherboard does not have these, then you would have to get something like an ARGB controller where you add that functionality to your PC. This one is called jargb v 2 2 And that's what it looks like. And there we go, plugged in. Now that that's all plugged in, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cables from the back. Now the RGB cable, I am going to fold it up and push it to the back. And then this one, you can do the same thing, or if you want, you can just tuck it all back here and just hide it really well. I would cut this little tag off too. Now, all that would be left to do is to clean everything up, make it look nice. So here's that one cable that I pulled through. And if you pulled both of them through, you can just tie them back here. And then you could definitely clean everything else up a little bit better than I did. 
but for now this is fine as long as the back cover fits and there it is fully installed and working great now i hope this video was helpful to you if you're installing this cooler and if you enjoy this type of content feel free to subscribe and with that i'll see you guys in the next one peace